It costs how much? And by the time you finish this video, you will agree with me that all of the components that go into a towing tank are well worth the cost that you pay to deliver high quality science. Hello everybody, I am Nick the Naval Architect. What goes into actually creating a towing tank? What are the various components that gets built up to deliver that high quality scientific result? How do they actually build that up from brick and mortar? Well today we're going to dive into the depths of that and talk a little bit about how that all adds up to that overall cost that you see on the bottom line. Because I think you're going to agree with me that it's well worth the cost of high quality testing. So let's get into this. So there's no denying the fact that towing tanks are expensive. It's not just science is expensive, it's actually confidence is expensive. When confidence is important. I want you to play a fictional scenario with me. Imagine I asked you to measure your weight on your bathroom scale, and let's say that it read 76 kilograms. Now that sounds simple enough. But what if I were to put a gun to your head and asked you if the weight was exactly 76 kilograms? Exactly. Not 76.1, not 75.0009. Now, what if you stepped on the scale again? Would it still be exactly 76 kilograms? Are you willing to bet your life on that? How? How much are you willing to pay to get confidence in the number on that bathroom scale? How valuable is that? See, when we demand such high confidence in our measurements, now we need both accuracy and precision in the technical definition. And that level of confidence is actually quite difficult to achieve in practice. It involves a great deal of components all collaborating together. So let's talk about those individual components. First up are the sensors. Now the sensors that you see in the towing tank, this is not something you're going to buy off of Amazon.com. You're not going to get this at the hobby store. This is something that you're going to get from specific facilities that manufacture high quality scientific sensors. Each sensor gets precisely machined to the highest quality standards. Each one gets calibrated and tested and verified that it works. They have the same provenance as a fine piece of art carefully tracked and documented to maintain reliability down to each individual part. But that's just the start of it. Because these are all electric components. They're not plug and play either. Each sensor is essentially the raw material, the beginning of our electric wiring process. It requires custom wiring to feed those sensors into the data acquisition system. See, we don't measure these sensors by hand. There's no gauge on there because that would be unreliable. Each individual person might measure the gauge at a different angle. So it all gets done by computer. So we need a data acquisition system. This is a specialized system to collect the individual electrical signals from a sensor and amplify those signals, number one. So we can take tiny, tiny, weak electrical signals, scale them up, so that we can detect the tiniest, tiniest fluctuations, and then we can convert those individual electrical fluctuations into a signal that the computer can detect. Now we're feeding that digital signal into the computer, recording it on hard drives where we can do all sorts of data processing with it. Now, as you can imagine, that's some pretty complicated electronics. You're dealing with some pretty high level processing there. Uh, you're talking with annual maintenance contracts to maintain those systems. It gets pretty darn expensive. Also, it gets extremely sensitive and detects a lot of things it's not supposed to. The measurement system of a towing tank is so delicate that it detects dozens of things completely unrelated. Here are some examples of things that the system detects that it's not supposed to vibrations from the towing carriage as it travels along the track, surge force from a wave traveling back and forth in the tank, a wave so small that you can't even see it with the human eye, but the data acquisition system can detect it. That's how small and how sensitive the system is. 
minor changes in the voltage of the electricity supplied to the building. Did you think that the electricity from the grid was constant? Your data acquisition system doesn't think it is. One of my favorite examples ever from the college days, I once worked in a towing tank that was right next to a wind tunnel and just on the other side of the wall. And every time the wind tunnel turned on, we would get complete interference from the giant motor of the fan in the wind tunnel. It was so bad that we just had to shut down. We got too much interference from the motor of that wind tunnel. As you can see, all of these signals, all this interference can be a large problem. Before a towing tank ever goes online, all of these factors need to be identified, explained, accounted for, and possibly corrected, even designed for at the beginning stage. Those vibrations on the carriage, that's actually something that they consider quite a bit when they're designing the structure of the carriage. They design it very carefully to avoid and minimize vibrations. The tank, in addition, is constantly checking themselves after they've built everything. They're checking all of their sensor readings, they're calibrating them and recalibrating their equipment. They have to maintain reference tests and spend countless hours behind the scenes, all to maintain the quality of their equipment. Let's talk about that idea of calibration. So I have a friend who works at a hospital, and I asked her, why are all the lab tests so expensive? And she explained to me, well, part of the reason was the work that they had to do to maintain their accreditation for those lab tests. You see, every day they were performing quality control on their instruments. Every day. They were constantly calibrating their instruments any time that they had to replace chemicals for their tests. The list goes on and on and on. And they were doing this all just to maintain the quality standards of their lab. Now, that actually sounds very reassuring when you're talking about the medical industry. We all agree that sounds necessary to maintain the reliability for those important scientific tests. Well, it works the same way for a towing tank. The towing tank is also a scientific instrument, and it has no less rigor and overview. They also have calibrations. They also have quality control and accreditation overview. And all of that adds up to additional unpaid work that they have to budget for. For example, each individual sensor needs to be calibrated. And let's just pause for a second and think about how does one go about calibrating a sensor? If we have this extremely accurate sensor, to calibrate it, we need to find an even more reliable calibration standard to compare against. Something more reliable than our extremely accurate sensor? Where are we going to find that? And how much is that going to cost? And once we've calibrated our sensors, then you have to put all the sensors back together and calibrate the entire system to make sure the whole system is working as a whole. And then you have to perform verification tests, quality control. Let's test that model. Then let's test it again next month and make sure we still get the same readings. Then let's do it again the month after that. All of this is happening behind the scenes to make sure that you are getting quality controlled, reliable results when you bring your model to the towing tank. And that's what goes into delivering a high quality scientific lab from the towing tank. Time. Time is one of the biggest components that adds to costs to the towing tank. It works against us in so many ways because of waves. Waves are the single reason we come to the towing tank and the greatest headache for costs. If I had to pick one thing that the towing tank was good for, it was understanding how free surface waves result in forces on the ship. Understanding that interaction. That's the primary tool that the towing tank is used for. But to get a clear picture of that interaction, we need to start with a calm water surface. And I do mean calm water. Glass calm water, that's easy enough to get at the beginning of the day. The towing tank had all night to calm down. We run our first test. We tow the model down the tank, we bring it back to the start of the tank, and we're ready to start our next run. Uh-oh, problem. After we run our first test, we've generated all of these waves, all of these ripples that are now bouncing all around inside the tank. How do we get rid of them? No easy way. Unfortunately, all you can do is wait for them to damp out on their own. Well, shoot. That takes a long time. Artificial beaches can reduce the wait time, but nothing can escape the fact that every time after you run that model down the tank, 
you now have thousands of dollars in equipment and personnel that cannot conduct any tests. We are all sitting around and waiting for those models to dampen out. It might be 20 minutes, it might be 60, but all you can do is sit and wait. Yeah, that's not fun. So the actual cost for a towing tank does vary wildly depending on a host of factors, mainly especially what kind of test you're asking for. But also it depends on the economics of the country where you go to. Towing tanks exist everywhere in the world. But if we're going to pick a general number here for a standard project that would include model construction and calm water resistance test, I start my estimate at around 20,000 US dollars plus or minus 50%. That includes roughly 10,000 US dollars for model construction and another 10,000 US dollars to conduct the test. Now these are just rough numbers here. I'm intentionally making them vague to protect my sources. Hey, if you think my estimate is wrong and you have a better number, please add your own estimates in the comments below. I would love to see what you have. I would caution you that each tank has their own contract. Some of them will offer you a fixed price to guarantee model test results. Others will just charge you by the day and it's up to you to make some maximum use of the time allowed. As with all things in project engineering, the best advice I can offer is start asking questions early, discuss your options, and hire a consulting engineer to guide you through the process. Now you might be thinking that was one heck of a price tag. I think I need to avoid the towing tank. What are my alternatives here? You could go to empirical resistance estimates, but no shipyard is going to trust empirical estimates with the risk of thousands of dollars in contract penalties on the line. By definition, they're only an imperfect estimate. For ultimate confidence, you need the towing tank. Well, what about CFD? I've heard that might be a good alternative. Yes, many designers have turned to computational fluid dynamics CFD. It's a cheaper alternative, and it does have many advantages. For the same scope of work, a CFD analysis would cost approximately ten dollars to $12,000, whereas the towing tank was in the range of $20,000. But the real advantage of CFD analysis shines through if you want to test variations in hull shape and hull optimization. In the towing tank, you need to pay for constructing a new model with each new hull shape. Yeah, that's a lot of time and a lot of money. But with CFD, things go easier in the virtual world of the computer. Just edit the geometry and start a new simulation. Total labor for that is less than two hours. For design optimization, the towing tank simply cannot compete against CFD. Well, I guess that means that CFD is going to replace the towing tank. Nope! CFD is not going to replace the towing tank. There's the question of reliability. Yes, CFD has the capability to deliver results just as accurate as the towing tank. But the towing tanks as an industry achieve this more consistently thanks to standardization. Any towing tank worth talking to follows the standards of the International Towing Tank Conference, the ITTC. The ITTC developed extensive standards for all the major tests, which ensured consistency amongst all the towing tanks. As a client, you don't need to know anything about testing to ensure quality standards. All you have to do is say, hey, towing tank, do you conform to ITT standards? Yep, okay, we're good. On the other hand, CFD does not have any equivalent to the ITTC. There is no uniformly recognized standard. So you have no easy way to ensure reliable CFD operators. They very well could deliver CFD results that are quality equal to the towing tank, or they might deliver garbage. This inconsistency between CFD operators is why towing tanks are still going to remain the definitive standard when it comes to resistance and powering prediction. So to summarize things up, science is not fueled by magic and coffee. It takes hard work, repetitive tasks of tedium, high precision equipment, and coffee. We may be surprised by the price tag of a towing tank, but we need to remember everything that goes into it. The high cost sensors and data acquisition equipment that require annual maintenance, 
the constant calibration efforts, and most important of all, that cursed time component. I'm sorry, but waves take forever. But we need to remember that all of this complexity is necessary because we demanded it. We asked for rigorous scientific testing with results that we can absolutely trust. So I can talk all day about the fancy equipment and the skilled staff, but what really matters is that test report with the numbers at the bottom. The ones that reassure you that there is practically no margin for error here, and that things are going to be okay. How much is that worth to you? Engineers should be overpriced, inaccessible, boring. Boy, were they wrong. If you want to have an accessible engineer to work with, click that subscribe button to stay tuned for more videos. And did you know that as a professional engineer, I do more than just videos? Check out the website to find out what I can do to make your project easier.